All right. Business dreams. Uh, Dear Billy One Two, I don't see it ever happening. Well, Jesus, there's a way to fucking start a dream. I don't see it ever happening, but I always dreamed about what it would be like to own a small bait and tackle shop on a lake. Coffee and paper at 5 a.m., people coming in asking how they're biting. Sounds perfect. What's your dream business you'll probably never own? Well, first of all, let's go back to your little dream. I always dreamed about what it's like to own a small bait and tackle shop on a lake. Coffee and the paper at 5 a.m. Is that you? Or you would sell that too? People coming in asking how they're biting. You know what's cool about that is like you'd be done working by like, no one comes in to buy bait at like noon, right? Or do you got to hang around after they didn't get shit? You know, I feel like fishermen and golfers are the same thing. They're always blaming their equipment. <laughs> you can just say, I'll tell you, you get this reel over here, man. They'd be jumping into your fucking boat. Are you serious? I'm seriouser than a fucking fat woman flaying the organ in a fucking bathroom. Um, people coming in asking how they're biting sounds perfect. Yeah, I like that, man. I like the sound of a quiet life. I will be honest with you. Um, you know, I always think, you know, if I had kids earlier, you know, well, they'd be all fucked up because I was pretty fucked up back then. So I had kids when I was supposed to have them. But if I had them earlier, they'd be getting out of the house. They'd be out of the house by now. I'm 53. Uh, I could really, you know, I would be working out like how the fuck I was going to get out of this business. <laughs> <laughs> or... Maybe it's just, you're just always tired when you have kids. I don't know what it is. You just get, they just, dad, dad, daddy, dad, 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 dad. It's like, you know, um, I don't know what it is, but uh, that quiet life. Okay, what's the your dream business you'll probably never own? Oh, well, shit. Me and Paul Verzi uh, talk about owning a cigar bar. Like buying like a strip mall and just having like, you know, like a you have to have like a fucking a cigar bar, a pizza place, and then like a barber shop. Go down there, you get something to eat, you get your hair cut, you fucking have a cigar or whatever. I don't know. I kind of looked into like owning a cigar bar and like it gets real really quickly. And it's not even the uh, the cost of like, buying a building or renting a place and then furnishing it with all of the shit. It's it's the cigars and like how that works. Like I heard if you if you get in business with Davidoff, you have to take on all of their cigars. So then I'm just like, well, what does that mean? You know what I mean? So so I guess what you're saying is like that thing that you probably wouldn't make any money off of, but you, you, you would just enjoy being around that. Um, yeah, I think like a cigar bar. I really love those places. I like how quiet they are. And I like when they get loud, it's only because something funny is happening or so they're talking about sports. It's just a, uh, you know, it's a tremendous, tremendous place. Um, See, was there anything else? I think back in the day when I was a kid, I wanted to own like a uh, like a sporting goods store because I just love sports so much. I just thought it'd be cool to be fuck have a store and there's a bunch of you know bats, balls, gloves, hockey st- equipment, all of that shit, workout stuff. I still love the Big Five out here. I love going in there. I love the smell of a sporting goods store. They always smell like rubber. I don't know what it, what that is. It used to be like the floor mats or whatever. You just walk in. For some reason, I just heard the sound, you know, like jingling of the bell. And you came in. Um, by the way, speaking of that, the amount of shit that is electric that didn't need to be electric. Now that, like, cities are becoming like 130 degrees and people are still questioning whether, you know, we're having an effect on all of this. Um, 
But I, I'm positive that we're going to figure it out because if I don't, I'll have my head in the oven, um, which would actually be good for the environment. Um, which is an old Doug Stanhope bit. Killing yourself is the greenest thing you could ever do. <laughs> I fucking love that joke. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think at it, 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 my age, I actually think that uh, if you could just help out other people in a quiet way, if you could just do it in a quiet way, and not be fucking parading around like, look what I'm doing. Because that always ruins it. You know what I mean? I wish people that got money would then help people out who didn't have money, that deserved it, rather than, you know, some money-grubbing fucking piece of shit. Um, maybe there's a business. You could start a fucking business where you vetted people for people who had money that wanted to help out people but didn't have the fucking time to figure out if this person was a dirtbag who actually is just lazy and doesn't want to fucking work as opposed to somebody who was working their ass off and, you know, God knows what happened beyond the pandemic that got him into a situation. Something like that. I don't know. One of those, those two things. Um, things I should have said. I'll tell you jobs I used to want to have. Like, I, I always wanted to drive a tow truck, be that guy in the back of a, a, a the ladder fire engine, you know, that steers all the way in the back, um, be a milkman, drive one of those big fucking trucks. I wanted to be a truck driver, um, garbage man, mailman, all the jobs I saw. Well, people, you got some sort of a car and it just, or a truck and it just fucking looked fun. And then I did some of those jobs. Like, this fucking job sucks. <laughs> like construction. I tried doing that one summer. Oh, my God. I just was not, I, I wasn't good at it. And then it's just like, holy shit. I, I don't think I ever ate so much. I would bring like fucking three sandwiches and I was still dropping weight. Did I just start a new fad diet? The construction diet. You know, construction workers are in great shape. They're really not in great shape, but a lot of them are. You know? I did three sets of carrying two by fours. All right, things I should have said. Number one, hey, Billy, button bulges. Oh, I love fat shaming. Keep it coming. Um, I was at my best friend's wedding when my boss made a comment about me. Oh, wow, you got a little, you got a little drunk. Got a little drunk. Uh, quick background. My best friend's older brother had a buddy whose dad used to run a pizza shop out here in the AFC East. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. I already got lost because that, I don't know what the fuck I just started thinking about. I think I was still thinking about businesses. All right. I was at a best friend's wedding when my old, bo- old boss oh, made a comment about you. Oh. Quick background, my best friend's older brother had a buddy whose dad used to run a pizza shop out here in the AFC East. They have since sold the business, so we are not trashing them in any way. Most of the people working at the pizza shop were friends from school. Oh, she's going to say, or he's going to say some fucked up shit about this pizza parlor. Most of the people working at the pizza shop were friends from school. This was just a high school job that we all took to make some extra cash. Anyway... I was a backroom guy since I was only 16 with no car yet, so I could wash, clean, and prep the pizza, cut cut the tomatoes, shit like that. Obviously, at 16, I knew my calling wasn't going to be a pizza boy my whole life. Fast forward to the wedding, the old owner of the pizza shop, oh, I assumed that the boss was a guy. Oh, so for, oh, look at this. Look at her being fucking a little uh, Harriet Weinstein here. Um I went over to say hi, talk, talk about the old pizza shop since it sold by the time we were at the wedding. The owner had a few Jack and Cokes and in front of the whole table, put his arm around me and said, oh, it is a guy, said, I'm not going to lie, buddy. You were my worst employee by far. The whole table laughed at the comment. Side note, I was the best man at the wedding, so the table was filled with the groom's family and friends. I never got in trouble at the pizza shop, but my two day there, I broke the tomato. But my second day there, oh. my second day there, I broke the tomato slicer by mistake. 
I forced a bigger one through and it just jammed after that. I assumed maybe that's why he said it. I still don't know why he said it. He might have just been breaking your balls. I'm 33 now. And that it happened four years ago. And out of respect, I just brushed off the comment at the time. However, I wish I had said something quick-witted like, well, I guess you dropped the ball when you hired me or something like that. Uh, nah. Nah, yeah, whatever. He's just breaking your balls. It's just guy shit, right? I got to tell you, you were my worst employee by far. And you should have been like, yeah, well, I got to tell you something, man. That was the worst pizza I ever had. So you hired the right guy. Am I right, fellas? Huh? Who's getting their dick wet tonight? Dumb shit you say at a wedding. Sorry, I'm being extra gross here. Uh, anyway, I got a, a, wife, a great wife and a son who's eight months and a daughter who's going to be four in November. Look at you. Congratulations. I'm a banker cunt, so I definitely progressed from the pizza shop days. I got nothing to complain about, but I think uh, about this a lot, and I see him from time to time, and now I introduce myself as employee of the month um, when I see him. Well, that's good. See, you rolled with it. Hope to see you soon. Go Bills. Oh, Bills, the new kings of the AFC East with Josh Allen. Exciting things going on in Buffalo out there in uh, well, old fucking War Memorial Stadium, whatever you guys play. Um, all right, number two, 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 two. Hey, Billy Q-Ball. Uh, back when I was a senior in high school in 2017, I was taking a class that was for seniors who were preparing to go off to college. On this particular day, we were t- talking about how we'd go about things with roommates. I guess college roommates. My teacher brought up this situation about if you walked in on your roommate having sex and she asked, what would we do or, or, uh, or say? And I just abruptly yelled, tag me in. Then a girl replied with, who would want to sleep with you? Oh, Jesus, he says. Oh, man, so you got, you got it. You must have got a laugh. Oh, you should have been like you if I had enough money, you dumb cunt. But you never think to say that. Anyway, I have thought about that since the day it happened. I wish I told the dumb bitch to go fuck herself. I still think about things I should have said. What do you think I should have said? You should have laughed because you know something? She listened to that story and put her... You listened to the story and you put yourself into it, right? Hey, tag me in. So then she put herself into it, and she's the woman getting banged by this guy, and some guy walks in and says, I got next. So that's what she you just got. to. Sometimes you just got to understand where people are coming from. It's better that she didn't say anything. Um, and who knows? You're only four years out of you know, high school. You might bang this broad someday. So next time I'd see her, I'd be a sweetheart. You know, tell her she looks good even if she doesn't, you know. Take it to go see one of those, uh, who's that bumbling English guy there? He does the romantic comedies. Take it to one of those and see what happens. Uh, I think you did the right thing. You, you, you left out the part when you said tag me in like you didn't get a fucking big laugh. I think it was so funny. It, she got into her feelings there. So I, I, think, I think that one's a victory. You know what I mean? I think you scored the game winning goal. And then uh, who was that guy who cross-checked that guy after he scored the goal in the playoff? Uh, Dale Hunter. He kind of Dale Hunter'd you with the who would want to sleep with you. Checked you into the boards. All right, things I should not have said. Things I should not have said. Hey, Red Velvet Bill. (laughs) I don't even know what that means, but that just sounds creepy. Um. Where am I before my battery runs out? Okay, I got like eight minutes left here. Okay, here we go. Um, When I was in the ninth grade, I had a health teacher who was an asshole. He was mainly a track coach, so he didn't give a shit about his classes and would talk down to anybody who wasn't in track. Oh, Jesus. That was a great description. I already hate this guy. One day I had to stay after school and make up for an assignment I failed because it was a group project and the partner didn't care or do their work. I tried to explain it to him, but he said, sounds like... Uh, sounds like that's a personal problem. So I just stared at him until he went, what? And I just said, you're a dick. Nice. 
He proceeded to give a 50% on every assignment for the rest of the year and failed me. I didn't give a shit about having to retake a class, but my mom wouldn't help get me a license for all of high school for failing a class, so I had to wait until I was 19 to get one. Wow. Old school parenting there. Should have kept my mouth shut and done his assignment so I wouldn't have to ask for so many rides. Thanks for everything you do and go fuck yourself. No, you know something? Fuck that guy. He's a dick and he, he didn't give a shit. He had a really important job teaching people. So he is a dick and you told him. That's good. You, sp- you, you said what you felt. You got your license now. Who gives a shit? You got a great story. Good for you. you stand by that one. All right, number two. Hey, Billy Buttercheeks. <laughs> you fucking cunts. I just want to get this off my chest. A few years ago, I was working in Arizona and the company provided me and my two roommates with an apartment. One roommate was a dude who I got along with. Um, The other was an insufferable lady who never shut up and thought she was way funnier than she actually was. Well, that's fun to be around. Needless to say, she annoyed the shit out of me. Oh, boy. In this nice-ass apartment, my room happened to have a balcony connected to it. It was the sole property of my room. You could not get to it except by walking through my room. One night, I had a few friends over, and we went to the balcony to have a few drinks and a smoke. All of a sudden... This bitch appears on my balcony and says, oh, this is where you all are. To clarify, she walked through my room. I'm already fuming. Wow, this is a really nice balcony, she said. And here's the thing I shouldn't have said. Fuck that. Fuck that. You should go hard here. You should go hard here. He said, here's the thing I shouldn't have said. He said, uh, she says, wow, this is a really nice balcony. So I say, yes, it is. And it's connected to my room. So in the future, don't come here unless you're invited. Well, dude, I mean, that's maybe because you said it in front of all those people. I think, I think it was fucking great. All of my friends looked at me like I was the reincarnation of Hitler. It was so silent I could hear them thinking, did I just hear this motherfucker right? Well, because they didn't know the backstory. All she said was, fuck you too. Well, fuck her, man. Loudmouth twat. Don't ever walk through your bedroom. Look, I don't even know these people, but the way you guys describe them, I just side with you guys, all right? And walked away. I spent an hour apologizing. The apartment was tense for the rest of the job. Ah, you apologized? That's the part you shouldn't have said. No, so this is where you are. Don't fucking walk through my... Look, you shouldn't have said it in front of me. You should have taken her side and said, listen, do me a favor. I, you know, I don't walk into your room. Please don't walk into my room. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That reminds me of one time, a long time ago, this promoter would just walk into the green room. I did a run of dates and just go, hello, hello. Or just go, knock, knock. And then we'll just walk in and start talking. It's like, who raised you? Who the fuck raised you? That's, that's like, that's not how you enter a room if people are talking. Am I crazy? Oh, my God, that drove me up the fucking wall. Hello, hello. Knock, knock. Oh, my God. And I didn't say anything because I I knew I was too angry a person back then. Now I could have just solved it after one night. Can you do me a favor? Um, Rather than saying knock, knock or just yelling hello, hello from down the hall, I would appreciate it that if I'm in mid-conversation with the other comedian, you would politely knock and wait till we said come in. Uh, that just felt good saying that. You know, sometimes you just, you know, the other person doesn't know. So that one person I just was talking about, they weren't an asshole. I just didn't know how to fucking communicate. And see, people, when you take responsibility, ladies, listen to this. When you take, <laughs> when you take responsibility for your actions, you can then try to find a solution. Um, I don't know, but this isn't, this isn't a big t- time for that, is it? It doesn't seem, oh, Bill, sh- quit your fucking whining. You're doing great. You're on the road. You're selling tickets. You're going up there wearing a little silk shirt, you know, to cover your blubber. Um, people don't know that. You wear a silk shirt, it hides like 30 pounds. I'm joking. It actually doesn't. I don't even know if it does. I don't own any silk shirts. I just wanted to put that fucking rumor out there so people would start doing it. What it really does is attract attention to the, you know, the part of the body you're trying to hide. Old Billy Big Shirt for another couple of weeks. Old Billy hooded sweatshirt. Hey, Bill, it's July. I don't want to talk about it. Next question. (laughs) 
<laughs> did anybody see that thing that guy did on uh, one of the Instagrams of TikTok where he imitated a coach after losing like a big playoff game, but he was just acting like a dad? You know, like what happened out there? And he's just going like, well, you know, we uh, just, I just felt like we were behind it at the beginning of the day, you know, crayon on the wall and something like that. The guy does it fucking perfectly. It's amazing. Amazing piece of comedy. Um, all right, that's it. That's the podcast, everybody. <clears throat> Once again, congratulations to Italy. Um, England, sorry that you got that close, man. It fucking sucks. But uh, go easy on that kid, man. It's a 19-year-old kid. He's got his whole life ahead of him. All right. Don't take out your fucking childhood on this kid and don't fucking say a bunch of ignorant shit because you were raised by ignorant people. Break the fucking cycle, okay? Be a Grinch. Grow a fucking heart, you know? Bring the Christmas tree back. Don't be a cunt, all right? That's it. Go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you on Thursday.